Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Woolly Thistle Shop Update Podcast. It's great to be with you. I am still coming to work in the shop as you will see I'm here and uh, we are still open and shipping orders uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, there's just no way to get around what's happening in the world but I know that many of you are enjoying the shop updates just because it's a break from all of that and I am happy to be part of your relief so I'm not going to talk a whole lot about what's going on in the world but I will just note that like last time I do record this and then pretty much a whole week will go by before it uploads uh, to YouTube and so much can change in part of a day never mind in a week so with that in mind if I'm sounding anachronistic <laughs> I think that's the word uh, please forgive me it's just that um, this takes a little while to edit and load all the photos and all the stuff that you'll enjoy um, and then to get it up to YouTube so if things have changed uh, so be it this will be your moment of relaxing and pushing the world back a little bit. Uh, none of us are able to escape what's happening, but we can temporarily together uh, while we watch, or while I do, the woolly thistle thing. So thank you so much for tuning in. I noticed that I'm getting a lot of new uh, viewers and subscribers, so thank you for checking uh, the woolly thistle out. It's really great to have you here. And thank you so much if you're a loyal and returning viewer and customer. It's really great that you're back here for another episode. Just know we're doing fine and we're doing fine because of you. So thank you for being a knitter who loves woolly wool and uh, supporting the woolly thistle as a small business that contributes to our uh, local economy. Thank you so much for supporting us. I hope that uh, we can keep going throughout this and we'll just see. Yes, yeah, so join us on our newsletter where as a subscriber you get a heads up to many things or you might even get a discount or you know just something special as a thank you for subscribing. Uh, we send out emails generally once a month with a big shop update in them uh, just telling you all that's new and uh, exciting at the shop. So be sure to be on our uh, newsletter list and you can join that at thewoollythistle.com. Remember we spell woolly with two L's here. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook. I am trying to become a little bit more proactive on Facebook. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but I'm sure many of you knitters are out there on Facebook and it's just something that I have not paid any attention to um, that I really should be. So let me know, give me a thumbs up if you think Facebook is a good place to meet you. Um, if you're there anyway and you'd like to see more of the Woolly Thistle there, I'd love to know. That would be helpful to know actually. But yes, we're on Instagram at the Woolly Thistle and uh, Facebook is also the Woolly Thistle. Everywhere is the Woolly Thistle with two O's and two L's. Uh, let's see. So what am I wearing today? This is the Rusty Cardigan knitted in Plotolopi which is, uh, let's see, whoops, this isn't the same color obviously, but this is what Plotolopi looks like when it comes to you, and it has the color and lot. This is a natural gray, which is really nice, and it's uh, 1027 is the color. So yes, this is the unspun yarn that, um, that you can pull apart because it's not spun. But once you knit it together, it becomes very, very strong and sturdy, nothing to worry about. I have actually even uh, steaked Plotolopi and as is my want, I didn't have to reinforce anything because this yarn is going to stay put. It's a very woolly wool. It's from Iceland and uh, I don't know if you can see here, but I have the gorgeous little buttons on here. These are... Um, from Jenny the Potter that I got at Rhinebeck one year. And I think they're little bees or flies, I can't tell. Yeah, so um, the Rusty Cardigan is available on Ravelry and I hope I'm not misspeaking. I think it's a free pattern. And a long time ago now, we had a cal uh, through the podcast to knit one of these. And um, if I remember it was knitted bottom up in the round, then you join the sleeves and then you do the yoke. So I knitted two of these because I liked it so much and it really is a very pretty design. 
and then I only had three buttons so I just did a three button uh, finish and <laughs> little trick here always make sure on button placement that you're putting one right at your widest part there's nothing worse than having buttons top and bottom of your widest part and having it gape so I always put my button right in the middle of my voluptuousness and that keeps things closed there it doesn't matter if it gaps a little bit you know above or below that but you don't really want that happening because of your buxomness so that's my little tip of the day uh, or maybe first of many who knows but um, this is a lovely pattern it's very uh, it's easy to follow it's not a difficult pattern at all there's no shaping so you start at the bottom knitting in the round and you knit straight up and then you knit your sleeves and then you put everything on the uh, circular and then you start your decreases while following a chart for the color work now um, you do steek it but oh my god what a great great project to do your first steek with because um, this isn't going anywhere so you can feel comfortable and uh, and confident steeking this and then um, she actually in the pattern and I'm sorry I'll put her name here the designers name I don't she's um, Icelandic I want to say but I'm not sure but um, I don't remember her name off the top of my head and I didn't I didn't check before I came on so I will put that here but she has you do a crochet um, edging which is really nice crocheting with plotolope was a little challenging I'll be I'll be I'll be honest as I always try to be um, but I finally you know after several attempts and uh, not liking it I think I found a gauge of crocheting that worked for me the other one I knitted is I think in this 1027 color actually I think it's this one or it might be one shade lighter and uh, for that one I think I did a knitted bind off because I found that was easier than the crochet but I actually like the look of the crochet to me it looks like an eye cord which is nice so this is what I'm wearing. Um, uh, the other thing I'll say about uh, Plotolope and Letlope, but Plotolope is even lighter weight uh, than Letlope if you're knitting one strand at a time. And you can knit two or three strands at a time of Plotolope. You can do anything you want with knitting, okay? Of course you can. But you can um, you could knit a coat out of this Plotolope if you held three strands together. That would be something else. But anyway, this is knitted with one strand and um, it is so light. You don't feel like you're wearing anything, but you instantly feel the warmth. So it's very warm, very lightweight, very hard wearing. Um, and I'm not wearing it next to skin right now, but I totally can. It does not bother me. I don't, I, I'm very tolerant of the itch factor on everything. So whenever people ask me, is that an itchy wool? I say, not to me, but it's not Merino because everything is compared to Merino out there, I think, uh, except for those of us who are enlightened and know better than to compare things to Merino. But anyway, um, <laughs> I don't have a lot of merino in the shop can you tell so anyway what was i saying um yes yeah, so i'm very tolerant uh i don't feel the itch factor on this wool lots of other people don't otherwise it wouldn't be as uh well loved as it is but um you know you really always should just do a test swatch tuck it under your bra strap like um louise of uh wool work or formerly knit british would uh would advise you to do and then you see yourself you know can you stand this next to skin but if you can't you just wear a long sleeve lightweight t-shirt underneath and for me that does you know it's fine yeah but I love my wool I don't find any wool itchy none <laughs> it's a point of uh, principle with me so I love the wool okay so uh, that's what I'm wearing is the rusty cardigan on Ravelry it actually has the I want to say Icelandic name so I will link to the pattern in the show notes okay so that you can click through it if you want to find find it let's talk about the giveaway uh, we were giving away a $25 gift certificate in the shop and I think we'll do that again this time but um, let's talk about who won the $25 for this week it is and I don't know her full name but it's the enabling cook and she left a comment saying I love those sweaters can't wait to see what you're planning <laughs> more on that to come so the enabling cook you are the lucky winner of $25 gift certificate to the woolly thistle
congratulations. And we'll do another $25 uh, giveaway next time as well because that is easy for me to do. I don't have to think about it too much. Okay, so what am I knitting on? Dun, dun, dun. Any guesses? It's a sweater. It's a vanilla sweater. Okay, I'm gonna get into it with you right now because I know lots of you want to knit this. And here is the gray version right here on Martha. <laughs> Her name's not Martha. Um, but she's about my size. So this is um, the second one I knitted and you can see maybe that it has the detail there around the neck, it has the detail around the cuff, uh, a different way of doing it. Um, I think I prefer this way for, for this. So this one, if I'm going to do detail, we'll have it like this. And you'll notice that I'm actually frugal Scott, I'm using up yarn that I already have. Uh, but of course this is Rama Finnelgarn and um, of these three sweaters that I've knitted, here we go, um, each one took six balls of Rama Fennel Garn, knitted at a gauge of, well, they were knitted on a US six. I think that was 20 stitches per four inches. Please don't quote me on that. But anyway, so I had these three um, pulled out for myself and I've been using them sort of you can see here that was the first one which i really enjoy this is the second one and this is going to be the third one this one's going to be different though from these two these two are already different this one here has a split hem and is slightly shorter than that one and it does not have the detail around the neck or the cuffs this one's slightly longer in length and it just has a one by one uh, rib around the bottom no split hem and it's got the detail on the cuff and the neck. But just check out the drape. How flattering is that on all of us? I think, you know, I think she's looking really quite smart in her sweater. The other thing I wanna tell you is once this is washed and blocked, it is beautiful, it is soft, silky, drapey, fluffy. It's really, really good, good stuff. That's why it's been around for years. So when you're knitting with it, it does have a slight crunch to it, which I like, um, but it really, really does soften up. So, you know, real good wool will soften up with wear and blocking and just become those favorite pieces. These sweaters in this yarn are definitely in that category. So I knitted both of these sweaters out of this book, which is Anne Bud's Handy Knitter's Book of Top Down Sweaters. And inside here, it is a lovely uh, spiral bound book that is full of directions, full of numbers, all of which I believe are easy to decipher, but not everybody wants to deal with that. So my hope was that I would be able to contact Ann Bud and ask her if she would let me release a recipe for these two sweaters using her numbers and her instructions. And I was not able to connect with her. So that's what I was waiting on. That's what I was waiting on last time and I didn't wanna say anything, but I have not been able to connect with her and it's not right of me to release a recipe using her <coughs> using her work and I thought about it and thought about it and how could I do this and may, well maybe I could do a how-to video and teach you how to um, use the book so I tried to get in touch with the book publisher couldn't get hold of them either you know I mean things are crazy right now couldn't get hold of them either so um, felt very very stuck for quite a while and then it dawned on me, Corrine, make your own goddamn pattern. <laughs> you know what you're doing. And I do. This is the simplest sweater known to the knitting world. There are plenty of recipes out there. There are. But I know that you want me to put together something that will end up like this. So that's what this third sweater is going to be. It's going to be a raglan 
top down, easy peasy, lemon squeezy sweater where I will hold your hand if that's what you need, if that's what you want, and walk you through how to knit your very own version of not exactly these, but inspired by these. Um, I'm not, I don't have time to write a proper pattern with all the sizing. So what this is, is a recipe that will really boil down and distill the directions on how to knit this raglan sweater in one size. So if you need a particularly smaller size or larger size, you are gonna to have to uh, leap from, from this. The best thing to do may be to get Anne Bud's book and if you already have it, which I know many of you do, uh, leap from this, the instructions for this, apply them in the book. And that way, I think it will help bridge the gap of instructions and um, figuring things out. The book can seem, I'm sure, a little overwhelming with all those charts of numbers. So you'll have one pattern that is not the same, but related. And I think it will help you figure out what you need to do to change the sizing. Now that said, I'm a 40 inch bust. This is a 48 inch um, sweater. So there's eight inches of ease around this whole thing. Um, so that's what helps give you the drape and uh, the beautiful way that it's sitting on the model there. Eight inches of ease is a lot to play with. So if you're slightly bigger than me, you might only get six or five inches of ease on a 48 inch chest. If you're smaller than me, I bet you could go up to 10 inches of ease. I don't know about smaller than that. I think smaller than that, you might end up just not fitting very well across here. And also the sleeves are wide. Can you see that? So, and the sleeves come down quite far. They are coming down mid bust. That's where we pick up the body. So if you're, I would say smaller than a 38 inch, you might want to go off piece from what I'm going to prepare. But here's my plan is that I will work this up, make sure it works. Oh God, the saga continues. Uh, I'll make sure it works and then I will release it as a free uh, pattern or a free recipe when you purchase Rama yarn in six, at least six balls of Rama yarn from me, uh, you will get the pattern if you would like it. So that is the deal that I've come up with. I was thinking about all different things I could do. You know, I was gonna do a group and a knit along and a this and a that. But my life is upside down right now, as is everyone's. There are a bajillion cows out there to join and I'm not able to uh, give it any more time other than the knitting. So this is my fun knitting, as well as serving the purpose of providing you, dear viewers, dear customers, um, a beautiful, simple, elegant vanilla sweater. So that's my plan. I hope that works for you. I will work on it all the free time I have. <laughs> I will, but you know, we'll see what that actually results in. Because as you know, I have two younger kids and um, my husband is now self-quarantined. He's not even living with us. He's in another part of the house uh, cooking on the grill at night. <laughs> So we are exercising social distancing in our own house right now. Um, and we just started that a couple of days ago. So far, so good. Kids miss them like crazy. We do meet up outside and move the chickens and things like that. Um, so long as we observe, you know, a good six feet between us, which is really hard because <laughs> we're not used to having that distance between us. Um, but you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder. We did just have our 26th wedding anniversary. Thank you very much. Yes, we did. And uh, yeah, kind of a non-event <laughs> for sure. We have uh, lots of celebrations in March in our family. And so they all came and went with a promise to yuck it up 
when things get back to normal and we have the ability to spend all our time together and uh, but yes there's lots of baking going on is there lots of baking going on in your house loads of baking so yes <clears throat> we're all over eating but it's delicious and it's also self-soothing <laughs> so I think we can all be forgiven a little bit for falling off our wagons um, that's that's my story and I'm sticking to it so anyway back to what I was saying um, I really don't want to follow my my uh, my outline right next I'm enjoying just nattering leathering as I would say and uh, knitting with you this uh, vanilla sweater <clears throat> excuse me this vanilla sweater is so simple that you really don't need to think too much about it um, but it's a very enjoyable knit and as I've said before and I'll say again no doubt that um, my mind is really craving the simple knitting right now and I wonder what that's like for you are you craving really complicated stuff so that you can get really stuck into it and zone into that place you need to be to handle you know color work or cables or whatever lace work oh <gasps> yeah no I couldn't handle lace right now not not even simple lace I don't think I think my head would explode but um, my mind is craving yeah all the vanilla stuff the easy stuff that you just <sighs> breathe into <sighs> yeah so okay I'll put this down for now and get back on track all right so we talked about the winner we talked about what I'm knitting I hope you're excited for this um, I hope that you will support the effort that I'm putting in by um, shopping for your Rama at the Woolly Thistle when the time comes it just requires six balls if you want a contrasting ball, then you would want to get that, or maybe you could use something from Stash. Um, it's 100% Norwegian wool, and um, you know, I bet you could use some of your Jameson and Smith to do the uh, the contrast if you wanted to. Um, any four ply yarn, really. I would go with 100% wool though for sure. Okay, so that is that. I have finished objects. <laughs> slightly embarrassed about these don't know why really um there are my mittens from the mitten cow and they're they've not been blocked yet and the thumbs they're a little rushed I've told you I don't like knitting thumbs but there they go this one came out better oh, oh hello hello this one came out very pointy which I'll probably try and sort out when I block it. So, but oh, let Lopi, very quick knit, if you're anyone but me who doesn't like to knit thumbs. And um, these holes here, I will cinch up. Oh, this one actually is really good already. But this one has a wee hole in it. And you get these in underarms too when you join stitches. And I have a wee way that I deal with them, which I guess I can talk about when we get to the underarm section of our sweater. Remind me. Okay, so this is my finished object. And let me tell you, there are so many finished mittens in the uh, finished object thread for the Wooly Thistle Mitten Cal that just finished um, not too long ago. So, uh, so many mittens. Some people knitted several pairs of mittens too. Uh, several pairs of mittens it was unbelievable it was a six-week cow and many mittens were knitted so thank you so much all the winners have um, been announced and hopefully have made contact with their designer oh quick word Maggie was supposed to be here this time but of course with social distancing she's not here but we will get her in this podcast again soon I hope I'm sure and um, I miss Maggie. I miss all my girls. I, I love my girls. So let's talk about the uh, designers that contributed prizes to the Cal. And uh, first up, I'm just going to read them in order that they're in in the in the thread for the Mitten Cal. We've got Ginny, who is Virginia Sattler Reimer, and uh, she most of these are pattern prizes. So she gave away pattern prizes, and winners have been announced. Winner was number 138, Glass Bonnie. Um, Erica Mount, uh, her winner was Tiny Giraffe, number 161. 
Tori Rowe is uh, Tori Searstad from Norway and her winners were Amanda Sondra. PK Schwab had Mama Sweets. Mary, who is Kino, she had uh, Miss Des, Indigo Night Owl and Peace Smokey as winners. Tilly Mongan is Mary and she had, uh, let's see, Sea Glass, Flock, BMSM, Knit and Round and Create With Me as winners. Shiny Fuzzy, I don't have a real name for Shiny Fuzzy. Her winners were Grateful Spinner 7, More Socks and St. Paul Knitter. Zigzag Stitch is Mandy and her winner was Glass Bonnie. Ooh, Glass Bonnie did well. Um, let's see, Two Strands is Marianne and she had Ducatista 2 and Addicted Knit and Quilting Knitter. Knitting Lotta, you had five winners. They were Debzur, Pamberdon, Ginny, Flock B, MSM, and Rose, spell R O Z E. Congratulations, winners, and Knitting Lotta. I love your patterns, they're fantastic. Um, Erica May, who is Erica Hooser, she is a winner, Blom Maria. Erica's been in this cow, I think, right since the beginning, as several designers have. Um, she designed the songbird mittens that I knitted one year um, and also the underwing mittens, which actually we created a kit for here and I should do one for the songbird as well. Knitted in Jameson and Smith. Scandy Work, who is Kristen. Uh, her winner is Sue C. Quilts. Mary Jane Mucklestone, no introduction needed there either. That's Glass Bonnie is the winner. No Scrubs is Carrie. I love Carrie's mittens with the covered bridge. Beautiful stuff. And her winner is D. 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 Schneck. D. E. E. S. C. H. E. N. C. K. Play Sweet Music is Anna Martina in Sweden. And her winner is Knitting Cat. Helen Magnuson from Iceland. Her winner is Susie Girl. Um, and that's it for pattern prizes. Then we had Folk City Studio, and she contributed a prize of um, hand-dyed, locally grown in Virginia, sport weight wool, and uh, her Homestead yarn series features a rustic non-superwash murret and merino wool that is dyed in very small batches using materials from nature. And uh, she offered up a two skein bundle of rustic sport weight yarn, which you can see here. So check out Folk City Studio uh, because that wool was really lovely. And the winner for that was Kate C4B, congratulations. We also have prizes from Ella Fino. Her winner is MN Lynn, and she has knitting notion tools and a lovely website. Spilly Jane, oh, we're back into prize patterns or pattern prizes. Spilly Jane, who's uh, from Canada and been offering prizes to this cal all five years. Uh, her winners were Hill, Vi, H I L L E Vi, E V I, and uh, P G P R C R S T A N, and Indie Gaudi. And then we have two $50 gift certificates to the Woolly Thistle, and those winners were Margaret1220 and Liesl, Liesl VT. So that must be Liesl in Vermont. So hopefully you got in touch and we got those out to you, but do get in touch if you haven't already. And also I wanted to show off these beautiful prizes that came in the post from a lovely customer, um, Autumn, and uh, her Instagram is Cottington Autumn. And I follow her on Instagram and she made these lovely quilted project bags. And so these are going out to winners too. Look at that nice size zipper box bottom just look at the different look at the ribbon being used and the different fabrics and then the other one is this lovely thing here this is all quilted it's actually padded you open it up and look at that it's a lo lovely lovely little beautiful little bag and this has uh, grommets holding that in. Beautiful work, all quilted. Yeah, 
So very nice. Thank you so much, Autumn, for sharing your talent with us and offering up these two prizes. They'll be going out. I'll need to check in with Maggie and see who won these, so I'm not announcing them right here. So once again, thank you so much for knitting along uh, in our cal for the fifth year uh, with the Woolly Thistle. Uh, really enjoyed it. It was brilliant. The chatter was immense and continuous and friendly and inclusive and all of that. So thank you for being awesome, awesome cal participants and we hope to do it again next year. Quick word about the Knitting Buddy program we initiated over on Ravelry. Thank you so much. I hope that you are making new friends and connecting with other knitters, um, as was the plan to try and fight isolation during this time. And if you were late to the party, um, all you need to do is leave a comment or, or a post in the Ravelry thread for that in our Ravelry group, which is the Woolly Thistle on Ravelry and we will try and match you up as we get uh, more requests we're able to group people and then um, yeah connect you with other people so i hope that that is working out for you uh, feel free to leave comments or chatter in the ravelry group as well if you'd like to but really it's on you now to make those friends once we connect you together um, and i hope it's of help so what's in the shop right now well since we last spoke we received in the woolly Mammoth from Northern Ireland. This is her 100% wool sock yarn. It's a blend of Cheviot and Blue Face Lester is what I think. Yes, yes, my memory is right. This is the Jasmine colorway and I think we've got one or two of this left. This is mine. I took this home for me. Okay. So this is beautiful and I can't wait to knit with it. It's got a really nice soft hand with it. Um, we had it in six different colors. They've all but sold out. Luckily, we do have a few of this color left, which is the Faded Fire. And this is the color for the socks knitted in 52 weeks of socks. I'm getting up. So here we go, 52 weeks of socks. This is my copy and uh, one of the patterns is this one called Gerst. It's pattern number 34 and it's designed by, why doesn't it tell me right here, Verena Kors of Making Stories fame. Beautiful sock, nice texture to it and it is knitted in Woolly Mammoth Faded Fire. That's a nice little uh, package for yourself right there. Only a few of these left however so and I don't know if they'll still be available by the time you see this. 52 weeks of socks. Okay, so we had this on sale. We, and at time of recording, there's still a couple left um, on pre-order with a hopeful date of arrival to you um, mid-April. Mid um, this is going live on April 10th. So <gasps> I don't know yet. I don't know yet if we've been able to get our package, our boxes from Finland and then we have to figure out how to get a couple of hundred books or more out to all of you. So we're working on it. I would beg for your forgiveness if there is a delay. Um, there will likely be a delay because we are a bottleneck now. Um, we can only do so much so quickly and we are working it out. But you know that the Woolly Thistle is always, always, always putting the customer first and trying to get stuff out to you as soon as possible, especially when you've been waiting uh, for a pre-order to come in. So at the time of recording this, which is way in advance of when you'll see it, uh, the book is still coming. Everything's on schedule to happen. When we get it, we will work out how we are going to get them out to you as quickly as possible. And we will bust a hump doing that. So bear with us. We're having logistical challenges, what with everything going on, um, but this book's worth the wait. And I don't know at this point if I'm able to get any more. So if there's any left in the shop as a pre-order and you really want it, I think you should get it because it, as far as I know, they're not printing any more after this. I am seeing if I can get some more from this print run. Um, and if I can, I will put them in the shop. So. Uh, yes, so Woolly Mammoth is a beautiful, natural, non-superwash, no nylon sock that's hardy enough for socks because it's got the Cheviot in it and the BFL, which I think are both fairly hardy, and it's got a higher twist 
to it to give it a bit more strength. But I have not myself knitted socks out of this yet, but I will. It's coming, I hope. Right, okay, so that's Woolly Mammoth and that's moving out and through the shop. I'm just gonna say this, you guys loved this. And I obviously didn't have enough of it. This is John Arbin's Exmoor sock yarn that I could not wait to get in the shop. And it went in the shop. I sent out a newsletter to everybody on my newsletter list. And unfortunately, only those who were very quick off the mark uh, were able to get, to get their yarn. And so many people were disappointed, which I really, really always oh, do not enjoy that because I feel bad. So anyway, I've put another order into John Arbin and at the time of recording, I'm waiting to hear if they can fill me up. I've put in a big order. Now, this yarn I'm sentimentally attached to and I've told you why. It's because um, the prior version of this was um, one of the first yarns I ever stocked. And it didn't have this label before. This label is absolutely brilliant, isn't it? We need, uh, we need to get this just for our journaling purposes alone, never mind knitting. But let me talk about the yarn. The yarn is so different from before. It is, um, it looks softer. It's got a beautiful sheen to it. You know I like this color, right? <laughs> um, so it's softer and plumper. The older version felt more ropey. So this has definitely got a nicer hand to it for knitting and it has a different yarn in it. So this has 60% Exmoor Blueface Superwash, 20% Corydale Superwash, 100% Zwartblouse or Zwartbles, and 10% Nylon. I love that it has nylon in it because I want my socks to last and I feel more comfortable having nylon in my socks. So, and this has Superwash in it or it's been treated for superwash too uh only 70 percent superwash 10 percent nylon and 10 percent that doesn't make sense it must be 60 80 80 percent superwash 10 percent non-superwash and 10 percent nylon so th these are going to be machine washable which actually is my favorite kind of sock yarn because i'm not going to hand wash my socks and feel like they got clean but I will throw them in the washing machine and hang them up to dry. That is my thing. So that's what you can do with this. But this is so lovely. I think you could wear, you could knit this and make different um, things other than socks with it. So uh, 13 different colors. They all sold out. I kid you not. I think it was 10 minutes, maybe 12. It was fast. And I hopefully will get lots more of this and it will become a regular at the Woolly Thistle is my hope. So we'll just have to wait and see what John Arbin can do for us. Of course, this is a John Arbin yarn from Devon using his Exmoor uh, Blueface, which is a local sheep. Yeah, good, good stuff. All right, let's talk about uh, Katie's Kip, which is the new Shetland Wool Week design by the patron Wilma Malcolmson and I was delighted that Wilma is the patron for 2020. My gorgeous seaweed slip over here is Wilma's design and this was in the Shetland Wool Week for 2019. I love this. I need to knit more of these types of things. Um, so Wilma is, the, Wilma is the designer for this and we have kits for that, though they're out of stock right now. Uh, so Wilma is already known to us uh, through the seaweed slip over, which is great. And her hat design is very lovely. I, as usual, I'm going to be very honest and say that um, I kind of, I dropped the ball on this. I've had so many people asking, do I have kits for, the, for Katie's uh, hat? And the answer has been no, uh, I totally fell off the ball. What I should have done way ahead of time was found out all the colors that were needed for all the different versions 
and I didn't I didn't I think I got sidetracked with all that's going on and just you know was trying to um, keep business going however fear not if you're still in the market uh, we will have uh, Katie's uh, yarn sets available maybe we'll make it into a wee kit and give you a bag as well or something those are coming over very soon from Jameson and Smith so we will have the colors and we will do something nice with them for you so keep your eyeballs open and your ears up for maybe a newsletter coming through about that um, I would love to get more Jameson Spindrift in so we could do those colors too and uh, honestly I need to get on that um, I need to get on that really soon because that always does take quite a while so that's my goal I think is to get Jameson Spindrift back in the shop in good supply um, get the Katie's kip up and running with Jameson and Smith and just yeah it's, it's juggling balls and usually I'm really good at it um, and I do feel like I did let the ball drop out this one so begging apologies thank you for understanding um, I'm sure you were able to source maybe uh, yarn from elsewhere but if not thank you for waiting for me to catch up it really means a lot and uh, we will have it in very soon some of you were able to get the yarn because we did have yarn for it in stock uh, some of the yarn so it, it ran out fairly quickly um, you can't see but right now uh, we're completely out of one 1a one two um, and we're out of a lot of colors but like I said I've got uh, giant boxes here waiting to be received and put in the shop and uh, all our colors will be replenished and there is actually another shipment on its way as well almost as big um, this is my last ball of 202 in Jameson and Smith this is a very oatmeal-y neutral color that we sell a ton of. Um, Jameson and Smith is out of this uh, due to COVID. Uh, the production is down. So we can't get more of this in ball form, but we do and will have it in cones. Now, a ball is 25 grams and has 125 yards. <laughs> A cone is 500 grams and about 2,500 yards. Good for garments, good for giant uh, shawls, um, and really good to have in a neutral color. So I have more of these coming over because I can get this in cones. Um, 81 is the nice um, tweedy black that they do. I can't get it for you right now. but. Um, that is going to run out of balls as well but we will have cones for that so we're making adjustments where we need to uh, don't hold off on shopping if uh, if you really need something because things will I think start to slow down and peter out I think unless we get our act together so let's see free shipping continues uh, on orders of $99 and up thank you for taking advantage of that and the hollyhock seeds from, seeds from my garden, we did try to send them out to everybody who should have qualified for it, um, but we've had to stop that now. It's, it's a very time consuming job. Um, they will last for next year, so maybe once we're back up in at normal capacity, we'll start that up again with what we have left. But for now, um, we're, we're stopping those, and I'm sorry about that. But you do still get free shipping on $99 or more. We sold out of By Hand Magazine issue 11, which is Vermont and New Hampshire, but we now have more back in stock that came through. This is the one that has yours truly in here somewhere. Somewhere. It's got lots of lovely stuff in it. That I, that I love this. I love this uh, magazine. So yeah, it's a picture from the Wooly Thistle there and there we go isn't that lovely there i am <laughs> in all my color work glory so that's back in stock and we just found out sorry i shook the camera there sorry uh we just found out that by hand 11's next issue is going to be from london they're going international and they're going to the UK which of course is my neck of the woods so um, I'm looking forward to seeing how I can support their issue with yarn um, 
for you guys. So be on the lookout for that. That's coming, I want to say maybe May or June, something like that. So I'll be sure to keep you informed of that too. Making Stories magazine is here and it's a keeper. It's beautiful. This is their third issue called Growth. It's selling super well. Thank you so much. You can buy this from the Woolly Thistle. Um, but do check out your local yarn stores first to see if they are stocking it. And if they're not, ask them to. I'd be happy to supply yarn stores with this um, magazine. It's just a really nice, really nice magazine with good articles and lovely designs and very generous with a number of designs so in making stories the unfolding shawl is featured and is here I was lucky enough to get the um, the beautiful trunk shell because uh, we should have had Katie Green being here right around now and we had this to show you and I showed this last time on the podcast and tried to put it on and gotten a fan call. <laughs> but isn't this lovely? It is huge and beautiful. And this is knitted in lace weight from Garth and Orr, their number one. So I wanted to show you what's coming soon at the Woolly Thistle and it is Garth and Orr. Um, Garth and Orr is a yarn maker in the UK. You've probably heard of them. They fo they focus on organic yarn and they have a really great label too. So this is Garth and Art number one. This is their Dorset Horn. So number one means it's their lace weight and this is Dorset Horn. And in this you get 350 meters which is probably near 400 yards in 100 grams. And I love this. So for you, you who scrapbook, you tie a little piece of this through here and uh, it's for your records. Isn't that great? Made in Britain. Love it. So this is organic Dorset horn wool. But I don't think it's what's used in the, um, in the unfolding shawl which you can you can knit with any of their number one so that's that one let's see what else in number one we have so number one is lace weight and i haven't fixed a price yet so that needs to happen before it goes in the shop this here is organic shetland wool in the chalk colorway it's classic cream shetland wool oh it's blowing out sorry there has that a single ply very lovely got a nice hand to it very nice and then I'm particularly particularly excited about this this is number one that's just one of the ties this is number one in North Ronaldsea. Oh, North Ronaldsea is an island in the Orkneys of Scotland. So this here grew up on an island where the rain falls sideways, probably chomping on seaweed, roaming the landscape, very hardy wool, if you need to ask if this is itchy, this is not for you, friends. But if you appreciate yarn that is soulful and it's place-based, and I'm evoking my friend Sarah Hunt of Fibertrek in saying that, then this is for you. This is special. This is lovely. So we have that. So those are the three lace weights that I have. And any of these, you can see the greys. The Dorset Horn is a wee bit lighter in color than the North Ronald C. Okay, sorry, it's all blowy blowy out. Can't show ya. Right, so we have those three in lace weight. And then we have number two. 
And number two is their four ply. And this here is Jacob, organic Jacob in four ply. Uh, really nice and bouncy. And a nice dark oatmeal-y color. Really pretty color, warm. So we have Jacob. We have North Ronald C again. So to compare, there we go. No, I'm not, I'm not able to compare it for you because it's blowing out too much. But this is their four ply North Ronald C. It's 300, uh, actually it's 340 meters per 100 grams. This is a 50 gram skein. So it's 170 meters per 50. Um, which is probably, I'd, I'd be guessing, I'll put here what that is in yards. So that's the North Ronald C. And then we have, oh, lovely, Shetland in four ply. And of course, these are all very natural, very natural, no dye colorways. And then we've got a long wool. And this one feels quite different from the rest. The other three number twos are um, plump and squishy. As this is a long wool, as you'd expect, it feels more drapey, more lengthy. And this is their Lester long wool. This does have a higher prickle factor, I think, than say the Shetland. All right, so do I have any more? No. I do have more, but not of number two. These are my number twos. So, you know what I was doing. So mostly greys with a nice oatmeal-y warm brown. Really nice, really nice. Okay, so then I opted to skip DK for now. Um, and I went straight to they're number four. And number four is Aran weight, which is like a worsted weight here. Again, I'll put the, the yardage, but it's 50 meters per 50 grams here. And this is number four. And this is their, let's see, organic Hebridean wool. This is Hebridean. So it's that lovely chocolate brown. And this color is called peppercorn. Love it. Very nice. And also in the Aran weight, which is really like her worsted weight, I'm very excited to have this, is the Lochten wool. So we have some of that. And this is the Manx Murit shade. And it's the Lochten wool number four and then highly unusual but ready to go here at the woolly thistle is their number five and this is their chunky weight oh this is jacob and of course these are all organic all natural colors squish squish so that's number five and then i got another chunky which is, oh, good grief. This is their Castle Milk Murat. I think this is so special. Castle Milk Murat. Um, look at that color. And it's so much more dense than this one here, than the Jacob. This really feels like it means business. This is like squishy and soft. This, this isn't itchy though but it does feel much more robust. Look at that. So these are both chunky weight. Uh, right now that's 100 meters on 100 grams. I'll put the yardage up for you. So that is my offerings from Garth and Orr. And uh, I hope that it does well because I would like to keep this in the shop if, if it does do well. So show your love and support for these organic breed specific wools that um, come from around the UK. Really special.
really lovely. Yeah, so I hope you enjoy the Garth and Nora. I'm excited to get it in the shop. I will send out an email to new, uh, newsletter subscribers when it's ready to go in the shop. Um, so keep your, be, please be on the list and keep your ears and eyes up and open and all that for, for that announcement. Now, we're running low on frangipani, but there is an order due and it should be hopefully in the shop by the time this goes live. Um, frangipani is doing really, really well. We sell it in cones. And um, I think there's a lot of Gansey knitting going on out there, which is fantastic. So you can get your frangipani here at the Woolly Thistle. It comes over from the UK. Um, and Tuku, we have really, uh, we have quite low stock of that. But by the time you're watching this yet again, we should have had a nice big fat replenishment of both the fingering and the sock weight yarn. So that's good. Um, Right, so I would just say keep your eyes peeled for Katie's Kip and uh, little kits from Jameson and Smith coming in. Uh, the Exmoor sock, while I was uh, checking something, I did come across some of the uh, colours that I have left over. These are actually sold. I'm looking for the order <laughs> that they go to. Um, they're really nice though. This one here, does this look like your order? We'll find it, don't worry. So, Mackerel Sky is this beautiful aqua blue. Uh, Dimitri, Dimitri, Dimitri is this lovely kind of tealy blue. And then this dark blue is Wortleberries. Great name. All the names are good. Like this one is Odd Me Dodd. This bright greeny yellow really good for a pop of colour in, you know, colour work. And then Bell Heather is the other one I have here. A lovely, lovely, vibrant Heather, purpley colour. Yes, I just wanted to show them because I had them in the shop here. Um, okay. Yes, yeah, so be on the lookout for more Exmoor sock yarn coming. Be on the lookout for the Garth and Orr going in the shop and Katie Kip hat sets that would be good so yeah keep your ears up and your eyes open <laughs> for news on the next lovely vanilla sweater that will be the one I release as a recipe and uh, we'll make sure we get plenty of all the colors of fennel garnin that you might want hopefully you will be able to select your six balls from what we will have in stock and yeah, you know, so things keep going, you know, we're keeping ourselves entertained and uh, the Kep will be here and Garth and Orr and more Exmoor, hopefully not too far away before that comes. We'll have the line of 52 weeks of socks come in and then we will work really, really hard to get that out to you as soon as we can. And yeah, I mean, you know, thank goodness we're knitters. Thank goodness we're knitters because I think... Um, I certainly haven't had two minutes to, or, you know, any time to do anything that's uh, anything to do with putting my feet up. But I do understand that many of you are stuck at home and not working and not doing your usual life. And so you maybe are getting a lot of knitting time in. So I hope that, you know, that that gives you some comfort that you're knitting. Um, and maybe uh, you're focusing your knitting practice on learning a new skill or maybe you're just trying to knit all the things or maybe you're knitting all Christmas presents or holiday presents for when that rolls around. Um, whatever you're doing, I'd love to know. Um, leave a comment down below. Um, we will do a $25 gift certificate again uh, to a lucky winner. So please make sure you follow the Willy Thistle here on YouTube that you subscribe. Give us a thumbs up and leave a comment. And yeah, tell us what you're knitting or what your knitting plans are through this uh, epidemic. And um, just keep in touch. It's always good to hear from you. And I hope that you've enjoyed this uh, episode today. And uh, usually I finish up by saying if you go out, take your knitting. So take your knitting all over the house with you wherever you go. <laughs> be knitting and be proud that you're a knitter. My goodness, uh, if there was ever a time for us knitters to feel good about what we can do with two sticks and string, now is the time. And maybe when this is all over, we will go out in, in force with our knitting. 
that's quite a good thought to leave on. So yeah, take care, take good care, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. And if you aren't, take your knitting, but don't go out, but take your knitting with you anyway. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.